LA Chargers. 2024 stars in the sky spell out eight and a half wins with a question mark. Five and 12 last year led to big changes and paved the way for the return of Jim Harbaugh to the NFL. We're hungry to win. I'm hungry to win. I told you that. You said you're starving. Harbaugh and his crew are going to be guiding a very different looking Chargers offense. Still have Justin Herbert at quarterback. Only got in 13 games in 2023, 20 touchdowns against seven picks. What a stone's throw by Justin Herbert. Herbert regressed, though. Only 6.9 yards per attempt. Under seven tends to mean a lack of explosiveness, which LA suffered from in part due to not having Mike Williams a lot, who they won't have at all this year. Williams wide open Mike Williams with the catch and he'll walk in Williams is gone and they won't have the guy that threw that touchdown to him either and that's more significant Keenan Allen no longer in the fold traded away off a hundred plus catch season 1200 plus yards seven touchdowns Keenan caught it what a grab Oh my goodness! Allen had 150 targets, twice as many as anyone else on the team, and the guy in second, he's gone too, running back Austin Eckler, along with his 400 plus receiving yards. The screen to Eckler makes the first man miss, and there's Eckler, left sideline! Third most passes went to tight end Gerald Everett. You get the pattern? His three TDs and little over 400 yards are out of there as well. They fake the handoff, Everett wide open, touchdown LA! So what's left? Rookie wide receiver Quentin Johnston, he's started slow, came on late to finish with over 400 yards. Across the middle, touchdown, it's Johnston. Joshua Palmer over 500 yards. Comes the blitz again, Herbert goes to the end zone, tipped in the air, caught Palmer, touchdown. Palmer would have had more, but he also missed a lot of time hurt. Filling things out should be second rounder Lad McConkey. He is a big time route runner with inside, outside flexibility. There is a route polish to his game that is as good as it gets in this draft class. Chargers O-Face was absolutely restricted by injuries. Ended up 21st in points per game, 18th in yards per game. Not great on third down or in the red zone either. Stick wants to throw it. He's going to pump fake it. Scramble, he's hit and goes down and fumbles it. Chargers O-line didn't help matters. Struggled to help their run game. Neither of their primary running backs hit at four yards per run last year. Eckler is stopped. And that is Nick Benito making the play for a loss of two. This season, they'll turn to Gus Edwards. He comes over from Baltimore off an 800-plus yard season. 4.1 a carry, 13 touchdowns. Touchdown, Ravens! Chargers O-line also didn't fare great pass blocking. They gave up 43 sacks. That was 20th. Big chase and he's sacked. Guard Jamari Sawyer gave up nine sacks, third most of any guard. Right tackle Trey Pimpkins gave up 13. And he is dragged down. And this is why LA used their first rounder on tackle Joe Alt. I think he'll be okay moving from left tackle to right tackle. He'll be able to pull that off. He is extremely long. You saw the dimensions. He's almost six foot nine. This is Jonathan Ogden type height. Chargers did throw third most, 24th in rush attempts. We'll see if the new regime tries to alter that approach. Guard Zion Johnson surrendered five sacks, not terrible. His pressure rate allowed better than most guards, at least. Left tackle Rashawn Slater, their anchor, and he played like one in 2023. Going for the big one to the end zone. What a throw. Touchdown, Chargers. Plenty of work for Harbaugh to tackle on the offensive side, even more on the defensive side. L.A. ranking 24th in points per game allowed last year, 28th in yards per game. Pull it over the middle, caught JJ. He's on the run! Primary problem, pass defense. 96.4 rating allowed, that was 27th. They were 30th in passing yards per game, given up 7.7 yards per attempt, that was tied for 28th, and 29th in yards per completion, only nine INTs. And makes the catch, touchdown Denver! Cornerback Michael Davis, their Waldo. He gave up nine touchdowns alone himself and gave up a rating over 120. And it's caught! Taking over for him, cornerback Christian Fulton. Deflected and incomplete. Nicely played by Christian Fulton. Safety Derwin James is a stud. No doubt he made 125 tackles. The game a lot more easier with energy and swag. In pass coverage last year, though, his rating allowed almost 100. Bruh, I can't wait y'all see that on film. Rest of the secondary didn't show poorly. James' partner, Alohi Gilman, held it down to a 75 rating, a couple picks. A for effort, but God, what a play by Gilman, who has been sensational in coverage. Their best rated cover defensive back on this team. Cornerback Asante Samuel, sub 85 rating allowed. 13 passes defensed is nice when you're on the WR1 most snaps. First and goal, O'Connell intercepted. 
Nickel cornerback Jasir Taylor, Jess Sir, held his targets to an impressive 77.2 rating in his second year. Agent to throw, intercepted! Chargers secondary should get an assist from their front again. 48 sacks last year, tied for seventh most. What a stop. Khalil Mack did his part with 17 QB takedowns. Unbelievable. The sixth sack for Khalil Mack, a new Chargers record. And they have Joey Bosa on the other side. Watch the diving sack here just before Bajan can get away. Tremendous play out of field goal range. Nullifies that deep pass. Still don't know what a full year of Mack and Bosa looks like. Cue the injury flag again. Bosa only six and a half sacks for the season due to only playing nine games and rookie linebacker in Lawndale's finest, Tuli Tui Pelotu, four and a half sacks, 12 QB hits, two forced fumbles. A nice way to start his career. Stevenson lit up in the backfield. Football came loose. Who's got it? Bolts picked up Bud Dupree, too. He racked up six and a half QBs for Atlanta last year. And take it down by Bud Dupree. Chargers gutted the middle of their defense. They're relying on three new defensive linemen, two new inside linebackers. Austin Johnson started all 17 games up front. He's gone. Austin Johnson to stop. Defensive tackle Sebastian Joseph Day is gone, chipped in with three sacks at least. But finally, Sebastian Joseph Day got to him as he threw the football. Also departed Kenneth Murray, linebacker, over 100 tackles three and a half sacks. And then Henry is stopping on line of scrimmage. Kenneth Murray. No more Eric Kendricks at linebacker. Also a triple digit tackle guy. He took down 117 of Wilson them. in trouble and down he goes. Okay, up front, Morgan Fox will get more reps. Five and a half sacks last year, only four starts. Wrapped up and taken down. Not clear who his two partners will be up front, though. Behind them, linebacker Denzel Perryman, 76 tackles for Houston in 12 games in 2023. He has a history of only playing about that many. Says here he's kind of fragile. He's Italian? Red well, perfect play. Linebacker Denzel Perriman, they lose two on third and one. Maybe fourth year linebacker Nick Neiman lines up next to him. 17 games, three starts for the Chargers a year ago. Nick Neiman made the tackle. Dicker the kicker, Cameron, 31 of 33. Can't ask for much better. Came to camp on the job this year and continues to just make kicks. Cameron Dicker adds another one, 10 of 11 on field goals this year. Return man Darius Davis, a nice 22 yards per kick return, even better on punts, 16 per return. No one was better, and he housed one, too. And he has fielded it at the 13, sets up his blockers, running left to right. There we go, Darius Davis, 20, 10, Darius Davis, touchdown, Chargers. Backing up real quick to absorb it all, Herbert is on center stage, doesn't have the four guys he's been throwing to for the last two years. Eckler was one of them. We'll give the bus a push though, he's no scrub. Have to slap a downgrade on the Allen from a conky swap. Not sure they're stronger at tight end either. Chargers O-line was ranked 24th by PFF. It should be better this year. Alt's addition alone improves the group. Center Corey Lindsley did call it quits on his career though. Bradley Bozeman takes over in all likelihood. Hood. Defense, lots of new faces. Front three basically is all new. Fox gets a chance to start full time. That could be a good thing, so give him an upgrade over Sebastian Joseph Day. Right now, though, his partners are kind of up in the air. How about one downgrade and one push, since one of those spots wasn't really held down by anyone last year. Two more red stamps at inside linebacker, though. Kendricks and Murray leave on triple digit tackle three sack years. Perryman is a vet who hasn't stayed healthy in three seasons. Secondary, four of the five dudes are returning chargers. This unit has a lot of year-over-year -year room for growth. Time to hit their schedule now and see where we might find their high and their low. Start with their floor scenario. A lack of wide receivers makes them a 7-8 to eight value win type team. They should still beat Vegas at home in that scenario. Carolina on the road, expecting to sweep Denver still. The Saints at SoFi, Tennessee at home, Tampa Bay in SoCal, the Patriots on the road, eight and nine. Floor, not a Mark Harbaugh would be happy with. Well, we gotta get the ball back to the offense quick. If Herbert shines without his old mates, they're a run-heavy team with a good defense. They could beat Pittsburgh away from home, defend home turf versus Kansas City, beat the Cardinals on the road, Cleveland on the road, maybe enough to take the division. I spun the game preview guy bag around and saw a nine and eight in there somewhere. It could have been eight and nine too, it's dark under here. You know what, eight, eight and one. 
Now I have to find a team for them to tie. Lick it, lick it, lick it, lick it. 